Valiverse has won the arms race. McFarland Toys is ahead in car wars with Valiverse and Ramen Toys digging in for a fight. And I need a haircut. And now, Toy Photography News. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Photo Dave, this is Toy Picks, and you're watching Toy Photography News. Now, in Toy Photography News, I take the fully revealed action figures of the past week, and I assign them photo scores based on seven criteria. The first is sculpt, the second is paint, the third is whether or not they come with an extra head or heads, the fourth is whether or not they come with extra hands, the fifth is whether they come with any accessories at all, the sixth is articulation, and the seventh is natural movement. If they turn at the waist, is there an ugly waist cut, or can they bend their elbows and knees more than 90 degrees, that kind of thing. But before we get into that, and if you're shopping anyway, please remember to click the link in the video description. It'll take you to Entertainment Earth, where you'll save 10% off all in-stock items, and you'll get free domestic shipping if you spend $59 or more. And if you're just watching it on TV, at checkout, you can take advantage of all that by simply entering the code TOYPIX. But if you're going there for just pre-orders, make sure that if you spend $59 or more, you enter the code FREESHIP59 to give yourself some free domestic shipping. And whoo, that feels, that feels like I just said a lot there. Ugh, almost out of breath. Fortunately, I'm not, because now we're going to get cracking with some good old-fashioned toy photography news. Kicking things off from Shazam! Fury of the Gods, we have the DC multiverse Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman here is basically just a total repaint, with the exception of her upper legs and her head, which isn't wearing a tiara, ladies and gentlemen. I would hold off and hope that Todd releases one of these things with a tiara, because Wonder Woman, without a tiara that she can wear, just ain't Wonder Woman. But here's the photo score. Sculpt, she gets nothing. Paint, we'll give it to her. There are no extra heads, no extra hands. She does have accessories. She's got pretty decent articulation, which actually leads to natural movement. I'm kind of surprised. That gives her a total photo score of 4 out of 7. From Disney's The Rescuers comes Miss Bianca and Bernard from Super 7. And I gotta say, they're little mice from Disney's The Rescuers. So, we're just gonna skip right ahead, and they're Super 7, so they generally don't have much articulation. Let's just get to the photo score, shall we? The sculpt, give it to them. Paint, they get a point. Extra heads, obviously. Extra hands, obviously. Accessories, yep. And even though they're tiny, there's just no articulation to speak of that's really all that great. So I'm not even giving them a point for articulation, which of course means no natural movement. Miss Bianca and Bernard get a 5 out of 7. This leaves it to Penny, also from Disney's The Rescuers and Super 7, to give her rescuers counterparts a little bit of photogenic street cred. Can she do it? Well, looking at her, I'm I'm basically going to say we have another 5 out of 7 standard Super 7 figure. Because, as I'm looking at her, there's not a whole lot going on behind or below the waist other than maybe a little bit of knee movement. And then you're going to get 90 degree bend. You'll get 90 degree bend at the elbows. Let's just go to the photo score. I'm giving it to her in sculpt, in paint, in extra heads, in extra hands, in accessories, but I can't give her anything in articulation, which of course means she's got nothing in natural movement. And now we've got some Power Rangers averageness with Super 7's Tiger Zord, who in Transformers terms looks like a brick. For sculpt, he gets a point. For paint, he gets a point. There are no extra heads. He does have extra hands, and he's got accessories. But just looking at him, you can tell this thing's not going to move barely at all. He gets nothing in articulation, nothing in natural movement, thus leaving him with a total photo score of 4 out of 7. More Power Rangers from Super 7. We have Madam Woe, who, well, it looks like she's not going to be able to move really at the shoulders or maybe even the waist. Definitely not the knee. Okay, let's just get into this photo score, shall we? She gets a point for sculpt. She gets a point for paint. She has no extra head. She does have extra hands and accessories, but yeah, what I talked about earlier, 
She gets no articulation and definitely no natural movement. Madam Whoa, whoa, that's a little Joey for the kids, gets a 4 out of 7. And now we've got the White Ranger by Super 7. And while this one looks like it'll move a little better, and it even looks better, it's got a couple extra heads, all the good stuff, looks like the paint's clean, I still look at a lot of problems with articulation. So checking this one out. We're going to give him a point for sculpt, a point for paint, a point for extra heads, a point for extra hands and accessories, but considering 90 degree bends at the knees and elbows, and what's probably going to be a pretty limited waist, I'm going to have to stick with a 5 out of 7. Now we're busting into some Cosmic Legions from the Four Horsemen with Cavern Specs. And no surprise here, these things are absolutely beautiful figures. There's nothing I can fault them for when it comes to sculpt and paint and all that good stuff. So let's just forget everything I was going to say and go right to the photo score. Sculpt, of course they get a point. Paint, absolutely Cavern Specs gets a point. Extra heads, yep. Extra hands, yep. Accessories, yep. Articulation, yep. But natural movement because of the bends and everything else, I can't give it to them. If Mythic Legions and Cosmic Legions, if the Four Horsemen just changes their tune a little bit, everything they release would get a 7 out of 7 photo score. Anyway, I changed many tenses there, so let's just give it this 6 out of 7. Next up, we have Altar Silovius. That's right. Nailed it. And again, we have a beautiful figure from Cosmic Legions. But this one's missing some stuff, which is nuts. However, I have to say, looking at the head... This reminds me of every alien movie or documentary you've ever seen with the little green men. Looking at that face, looking at those eyes, <laughs> it's awesome, except this would be little blue women, possibly. I don't know. Anyway, let's head to that photo score. Photo score, it gets a point for sculpt, a point for paint. There are no extra heads or extra hands, however. There are extra accessories and the articulations there, but no natural movement, again, because of the limited range. And that gives it a 4 out of 7. Still pretty, though. And now we're on to Neckaville with something I'm very pleased with. It is the creature from the Black Lagoon. Here's why I'm pleased. As I'm looking at these pictures, it looks like he's got a ball-jointed waist. But I'm also about to prove to everybody that even though I've put a lot of thought into this whole photo scoring system, it ain't perfect. Here's what I'm talking about. If we check out the photo score, the sculpt, he gets it. The paint, he gets it. Extra heads aplenty, extra hands aplenty, but he doesn't get a point for accessories. And to be honest, I'm not sure he needs any accessories. This might be perfect. So that's what I mean by this system's a little flawed, but... Articulation nails it, and because of that ball jointed waist, and I'm looking at other bends, it looks like I can give him natural movement, giving the creature from the Black Lagoon a photo score of 6 out of 7. This takes us to NECA's Angela from their Gargoyles line, and I have to say, while Angela does look to have a strikingly similar sculpt to her mom, Demona. There's enough going on with overlays where I'm not going to bust her on that. So, checking out what's going on with Angela here, checking out her photo score, I'm going to give her a point for sculpts, I'm going to give her a point for paint. She has an extra head, she has extra hands, she has accessories, including like a little egg and herself as a kid. And she's got pretty decent articulation, but she has a waist cut, which means her natural movement gets her to 6 out of 7. And now we're on to this month's Moffex releases. The one line that I would chill for if I could. Anywho, we start off with Bo-Katan Kreese, who looks really good. I'm sitting here wondering, should I hold out and hope that SHF does it? Or should I pull the trigger and get the Moffex? Because even though I love Moffex, SHF made my original trilogy characters, and so I want to be totally cool with that line and... Oh boy, I've already bored you with all this talk. Anyway, Bo-Katan looks really good, just like any other Moffex. She comes with plenty of accessories. Her head looks pretty good. The one that looks like Katie Sackhoff is close. The Mando head, you love how it looks in proportion to the body with the helmet. 
Anyway, let's just look at the photo score, shall we? Where I'm not even going to waste your time. The photo score for Bo-Katan Kreese is a 7 out of 7. And then we have Shin Ultraman. Or is it just Ultraman? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. But not going to waste your time here either. He comes with all the things to make him a perfect figure for your photographic needs. So, for him as well, he gets a photo score of 7 out of 7. Now, we're looking at the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Android 19. And ladies and gentlemen, I've now told you everything I know about this character. Yes, friends, I have zero Dragon Ball Z street cred, but I can say, looking at this, he looks pretty impressive. Doesn't look like movement's too limited, but it is in the torso, so I might have to bust him in that. In fact, when I came up with a graphic, I did bust him in that. So, going to the photo score, we're giving him everything. He gets a point in all of it, except natural movement because i just don't see that he can move all that naturally even for a bigger character like this with that torso so six out of seven and now i wanted to highlight the task force rangers here which i found on the 5k toys instagram page now i don't have a lot of information about these things you're looking at everything i know i did find one picture where it looks like they do come with alternate hands so you can basically make them lefties but I couldn't find anything in the description to tell me anything else. My gut is they're all the same body with slightly different overlays. Some of them have pretty different overlays. So I don't know what I'd score them. And I don't have enough information to give an informed score. So I'm just not going to. But I will show you what else I found on the 5K Toys Instagram page. Now also at 5K Toys is this King Arthur. Looking at him, he looks phenomenal. I'm not going to bust this guy at all when it comes to the sculpt and paint. But as I look through the images, I don't see that he has more than 90 degree bend at the knees or elbows. And while he is an armored character, I can see limited movement in the torso because of that. I don't see limited movement in the knees and elbows because of that. So I couldn't give him the perfect score, but he still looks pretty good. He also. There's a throne for him that you would spend an extra bit of money. Basically, for he and the throne, it would probably run you right around 140. But, looking at the photo score, he gets a point for everything but natural movement. Because the sculpt is great, the paint's great, he's got an extra head, he's got extra hands, he's got accessories, obviously. He's got some articulation. But again, because I couldn't see any photos with anything more than a 90 degree bend at the knees and elbows, I can't give him natural movement. So... Six out of seven. And now the final thing I'm highlighting from 5K Toys Instagram page is Karama. And I don't know anything about this. He might be a third party interpretation. All I know is looking at this figure, I'm thinking it's pretty incredible. I'm thinking it does all the things for all the photos. So if you're all about the photography and you know who this character is, I don't see why you wouldn't want to grab it. So, looking at the photo score, and just looking at the picture I put together with the photo score, I can't see how I can give him any less than a 7 out of 7. He has all the things. He has all the movement. Checking out the other pictures. This, my friends, is a perfect photogenic figure. And now, for the final import, comes the Giver 1. And I have a question before I talk about this thing. I've never held a Figma figure in my hand, so let me know. Are Figmas worth it? Because I've seen mixed reviews. But looking at this thing, I also checked out other Givers, and it looks like there's enough different here to give them a point for sculpt. This thing's got insane movement. It's got all the parts. I don't know what else to say. It's another one where I'm not going to waste any more of your time. The Giver one here, 7 out of 7. And now we're at the Masters of the Universe Masterverse line, which had tons of reveals. Then we're going to move on to Mezco and finish it off with a couple Hasbro figures before I get to test drive some lozenges. Because, wow, this is a lot of talking. Anyway, we are on Merman right now. And checking out Merman, he's got a little bit of uh, some reuse going on. So, checking out his photo score... We're going to give him nothing on sculpt. We're going to give him paint. He has no extra heads. He does have extra hands, accessories, and he's got articulation. But that waist cut 
gives him a natural movement of goose egg, giving him a total photo score of 4 out of 7. Next up is Grizzlore, and fun fact, he was my first evil horde member when I was a kid, and what's weird is somehow I still don't really have much nostalgia for the brand. Very strange. Anyway, Grizzlore's looking pretty good, and I think that's pretty much a new sculpt, so checking him out, we're going to give him a point for sculpt. He's going to get a point for paint. Gotta love the fuzziness and the overlay he's got going on there. He has no extra heads, but he does have extra hands. He has accessories. He's got decent Masterverse articulation, but again, waist cut, no natural movement, 5 out of 7. And now we have Buzz Off, which is something I've been told to do a few times in my life. There is, there is shame. But, as far as I can tell, this is a relatively new sculpt. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. So, he gets a point for sculpt. He gets a point for paint. He has no extra heads or hands, but I'm not sure he needs extra hands because claws. He does have accessories. He has articulation, but again, masterverse, waist cut, no natural movement, 4 out of 7. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the robot that everybody thinks is He-Man because blue skin? Anyway, we have Faker here, who is a straight-up repaint, but you kind of understand why. Still, that doesn't give him a point for sculpt. He does, however, get a point for paint. There are no extra heads. There are extra hands, however. There are accessories. He does have articulation, but again, it's the Masterverse articulation. No natural movement. Four out of seven. And now, Clamp Champ, whose overlay and arm are just enough. To make me decide, okay, he's not a straight up repaint, I'll, uh, I'll give him a point there. Looks good, looks like a He-Man character. I, you know, if you're into Masterverse, he's probably for you. Sculpt, I gave him a point. Paint, I gave him a point. He has no extra heads. He does have extra hands. He has an accessory. He's got articulation. But again, Masterverse articulation, which means nothing for natural movement and a photo score of 5 out of 7. And now, Horde Skeletor, who even though he looks to me to be a straight-up repaint, there's something always cool about a dude with a bony head. Anyway, checking him out, I'm not giving him a point for sculpt. He gets a point for paint. That weird metallic over him looks really cool. He has no extra heads. He does have extra hands. He obviously has accessories and articulation, but broken record time, so no natural movement. Skeletor gets a score of 4 out of 7. Okay, now we're on Prince Adam, and to be honest, for a Masterverse figure, they crushed it on Prince Adam, and all I could think while looking at him is from the movie Big Daddy, where Jon Stewart's girlfriend says, We wasted the good surprise on you! Anyway, checking him out, the kid can move, he's got an extra head, he, he really kind of looks like the coolest thing Masterverse revealed, which is which is weird, at least as far as photo scores are concerned. There are cooler looking figures, but I'm kind of amazed. Anyway, he gets a point for sculpt, a point for paint, a point for extra head, a point for extra hands, a point for accessories, a point for articulation, but again, broken record, nothing for natural movement, 6 out of 7. And now, ladies and gentlemen, every week I find a way to blow it somehow on the photo score, and if you've been waiting for that for this week's episode, you found it. This is Web Store, who is a repaint, looks good, but he's still a repaint. So, when I look at the photo score, I gave him nothing for sculpt, he gets a point for paint, he gets no extra heads, he does get a point for hands, a point for accessories, a point for articulation, but again, no natural movement giving him a score of 4 out of 7. One day, I'm going to get this perfect. And then there was Ram Man, who definitely looks like the Ram Man of old. He's even got additional armor and all that stuff, which, which seems kind of cool. Got an axe, he's got extra heads. Ram Man looks good. It's, it's kind of like this one is the opposite of wasting the good surprise on you, because... He's actually a cool character that should look cool. He doesn't have much going on at the knees, it looks like, but at the same time, I remember the old toy. You just push him down, and he shoots straight up, so I'm not going to bust him too hard there. So, looking at the photo score, he gets a point for sculpt, a point for paint, a point for extra heads, because he actually has extra heads. A point for extra hands, a point for accessories, a point for articulation, but again, no natural movement. He gets a 6 out of 7. 
And then there was Clawful, who for whatever reason, I see him, and I think of that old voice that was like, I don't know, boss, what's going on? Maybe that was actually his voice. I don't know, I'm making things up as I go along. But checking him out, he looks cool. I remember that he had one huge claw, one tiny claw, and all that. I remember this guy from being a kid as well. So, we're going to give him a point for sculpt. We're going to give him a point for paint. He has no extra heads or hands, which again, I don't know that you bust him too hard for not having extra hands since his hands are claws. He does have accessories. He's got the articulation. He's got nothing on the natural movement, giving him a photo score of 4 out of 7. And now we've got new Eternia Skeletor, who, if I'm honest, actually looks really cool. He seems like his head's a little small and all that, but I can't even bust him because... It's a skull head. It probably would be a little smaller. So just checking him out. Looking rad. I don't know. Like if I if he didn't have a waist cut, I might actually get this figure just because of how good he looks. Anyway, looking at the photo score, he gets a point for sculpt. He gets a point for paint. Nothing in extra heads. He does have extra hands. He has accessories. He has articulation. No natural movement. Total score of 5 out of 7. And then there was Whiplash, who without a waist cut, I would also get this guy. He just looks big and monstrous. He's kind of like what a toy should be. Just really colorful, nuts looking, just really awesome. Anyway, checking out his stuff, looking at the picture that I attached with the photo score, obviously we've got a new sculpt. He's got great paint, no extra heads, but he does have extra hands, plenty of accessories, and he's going to have your standard MOTU articulation, which means no natural movement and a photo score of 5 out of 7. And then there was Slush Head? I don't remember this guy, but I think he might be a New Adventures of He-Man character. Anyway, looking at him, he also has that really cool, just toy look. Just awesome. The whole toyetic thing. I think he looks good, believe it or not. But again, waist cut. Sorry, man. I just can't do it. I can't. That's like the one thing I just can't do. I can't do waist cuts. Anyway, you're bored listening to that. So... Checking out the photo I attached with the photo score, he gets a point for sculpt, a point for paint, a point for extra heads, a point for extra hands, he gets a point for accessories and articulation, but again, no natural movement, giving him a total photo score, a 6 out of 7, and ladies and gentlemen, as much as I said Prince Adam might be the winner, or maybe Ram Man, this guy might actually be the winner. And then there was the Mezco Ghost Spider, and... She doesn't look like she moves very well, and I know that from time to time, Mezco will switch that stuff up, but I have to go by the pictures they offered up in the solicitation. I'm not seeing any more than 90 degree bends at the elbows and knees, and for a spider character, that's no good, and the suit almost seems too tight to even allow too much for torso movement. So I have to say, when it comes to spider characters, I just don't think Mezco's the way to go. So... Checking out her photo score, I gave her a point for sculpt, point for paint, a point for extra heads, a point for extra hands, and a point for accessories, but she looks so limited on articulation, I couldn't give her that, and I can't give her a point for natural movement, giving Ghost Spider a score of 5 out of 7. And now we're on to the big time Marvel Legends reveal of the week with the Gamerverse Miles Morales Spider-Man, and I'm going to say something here that you might think, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's saying it. If you're a Marvel Legends fan, I think you should buy this guy because he comes with all kinds of stuff and he probably comes with the bare minimum for what you should be expecting for 25 bucks. At least that's my oh-so-humble opinion. So if you're into Legends and you want to show Hasbro what's up, you pick up Miles, you leave Tarantula on the pegs. Anyway, looking at him, I'm checking out his photo score right now. He is mostly a repaint, so he doesn't get anything for sculpt. He does get points for paint. He has no extra head, but he's got plenty of extra hands. He actually has four sets of hands. He has accessories with the cat. He has pretty good articulation, but again, waist cut, which means no natural movement. Miles Morales, Gamerverse Spider-Man, gets a total score of 4 out of 7. And now for the final set. For this week's Toy Photography News, we have the Star Wars The Black Series, Luke Skywalker, and Grogu 2-Pack. And I have to say, the 2-Pack doesn't look that bad. Obviously, there's articulation problems when it comes to Star Wars figures that Hasbro makes. Some argue that could be the licensing from Lucasfilm. I don't know, only because SH Figuarts doesn't seem to have problems when it comes to articulation. But 
We'll see. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll find all that stuff out. Anyway, he's got a new tunic. This is the first time we've seen a Luke Skywalker from any company, as far as I know, that looks like he actually is from the time frame of the Book of Boba Fett or the Mandalorian, so that's pretty good. And that overlay, also, like, not gonna bust him for a repaint or anything like that. And Grogu has a ball joint at his neck, so that's kind of cool, too. This set's got some stuff going for it, but when you're looking at the photo score... I'm going to give him a paint for sculpt. I'll give him a point for paint. And there's no extra heads. There's no extra hands. There are a few accessories, though. There is okay articulation, but because it's only okay, it's got nothing for natural movement, giving this two-pack a photo score of 4 out of 7. Now, where did I put those lozenges? And that's it for this week's edition of Toy Photography News. Now comment below and let me know, are there any figures that you saw in this week's episode that you'll be picking up? Are there any that I missed? And most importantly, do you need a haircut too? As always, thanks everybody for checking out the vid and staying through all the way to the end. It's hugely appreciated. So, until next time, have fun and happy snapping. See ya.